So I'm gonna talk about issues about the Hong Kong protests and where do I stand. I'm gonna talk about from both in a middle and possibly a neutral standpoint since there are versions coming from both sides of the aisle. So to begin with, we know it was a story about a Chinese national who, uh, who went out to Taiwan with his girlfriend on a vacation and it started when he killed his uh, pregnant wife or fiance or wherever he was so he fled to Hong Kong where they had no extradition treaty with uh, mainland China or communist China and they tried to convince the Hong Kong officials to enforce an extra diet law just to uh, bring him back to China and face justice. So a year has passed since the extradition law had been proposed and protests erupted. Now a year later, uh, it's now about like a national security law or so-called national security law to uh, arrest any uh, person living in Hong Kong, whether of a foreign national or Hong Konger to uh, face arrests if speaking out against the Chinese communists and to speak out against China. Before we get into what two sides are in this issue, let's go into the, the Hong Kong protests that happened sometime in the late 1960s, both the, the 66 and 67 riots so i'm gonna first start off with the uh, hong kong protests that happened in the 1966 so obviously according to the write-ups it was about protests about the increased prices of the star ferry that goes from that goes that goes from across the other side in the cities of hong kong so they protested because they want to lower the prices. So for the 67 protests, I'm gonna talk about what is uh, being explained from all sides. So the other side here, the Hong Kongers were protesting about the uh, British government that passed laws that would displace Hong Kongers to live in undesired places. And they were demanding the British government to share the same equal quality of living as for the British who were living in Hong Kong. The other side, they were protesting uh, that they, they were protesting and the British government accused them of being like Maoist communist sympathizers that they were paid by the communist Chinese to uh, loot the city. So, of course, I will not be going further into the other Hong Kong protests, but you can go ahead and search and read for yourself the uh, July 1 protests about the Article 23, which is the, supposed to be about the national security law. And then, of course, we know the uh, 2014 Umbrella Hong Kong protests. You can all read about it for yourself. But I'm going to make a point about the recent Hong Kong protests that have been going on for a year now. So the first thing I'm going to point out here is so since the handover from the British the communist China has been wanting to further their own and furthermore their influences and furthermore their uh, authoritarian agenda in Hong Kong. So They've been doing uh, by any ways and means, just like as this uh, national security law has just to serve as an example. So this extradition bill that could have been used only to help extradite that uh, man who murdered his pregnant wife in Taiwan. So the Chinese Communist government is using this 
opportunity to further their own influence and further their own uh, authoritarian agenda to generally extradite just any average Hong Konger who, or any Hong Kong citizen or anybody in Hong Kong that has that speaks out or writes anything or is very vocal against the uh, Chinese Communist government and that's why in any average Hong Konger who who is afraid of this kind of extra extradition bill will just generally point out at any uh, Hong Kong citizen to be extradited for going against the Chinese Communist government and then you got all these uh, that's why you got all these uh, Hong Kongers who are going out there and protesting but it doesn't mean that you know literally that uh, all Hong Kongers are against both uh, being an being an independent Hong Kong or being pro West Hong Kong or being pro communist China Hong Kong of course in this Western countries like US and UK our right-wing governments like the leadership of uh, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson who want to further their own uh, capitalist right-wing agenda in this autonomous region just like uh, the authoritarian behavior in uh, China so the first thing I'm going to point out here is you've got China and then you've got the West who are using this protest to further their own advancement, to further their own influence. So to point out on the protesters or in the protests, you've got the uh, Chinese communist supporters or the pro-Beijing camp on this side and then who are, who are being supported and funded by the Chinese communist government to further their own authoritarian authoritarian agenda in that autonomous region and then on the other side you've got the so-called uh, pro-democracy camp or pro-western democracy camp to be specific who are being supported by western countries like the United States and the United Kingdom to be specific through the corporate lobbyists and through their uh, organizations who are funding and organizing this uh, pro-Western uh, rallies to further their own advancement into that uh, region. So you got a foreign power who's implementing their own version of an authoritarian style of communism and then you've got other you got the other side which are foreign powers who are implementing their own version of neoliberal conservative capitalism which is also another form of an authoritarian government so that's why you cannot trust how these foreign countries are handling the situation so pretty much I am on the side where Hong Kong should be itself independent of what they can be for a free and a stable state while I am not in favor of what this side is implementing their policy while the other side is implementing their own policy so that's why I don't really side with its pro-western or pro-china because both of them have their style of implementing their own version of uh, so-called uh, democracy or their own version of an economic system because you got uh, the you got this side china who uh, xi jinping is uh, funneling his own version of communism and then you have got the other side of western countries like the leadership of trump and johnson who are who are implementing their version of conservatism neoliberalism capitalism 
and right-wingism. So pretty much you really cannot trust either side because this is why they both are implementing the same interests in Hong Kong. So let's go back to the uh, protesters. So the pro-Beijing camp who are waving the red Chinese flag and they're singing March of the Volunteers, the Chinese national anthem, to rouse the support from the Chinese government and acknowledge that they are in favor of Chinese aggressive intervention in Hong Kong. And then of course you got the other side, which are the so-called pro-democracy protesters who are waving both the American and British flag. And then, of course, they are singing the American anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, and then the uh, British anthem, God Save the Queen, to acknowledge and that they got the support from the two countries. Of course, you got hysteria from the media and the bloggers who are saying on one side, saying that the protesters were attacking the police. And then you got the other side who are saying that the police were attacking the protesters during the riots. So then, of course, you've got uh, foreigners who are doing their YouTube blogging or based in China who are defending how great and safe China is. And then you've got the other uh, YouTube bloggers who are anti-China, especially those who are based here in the US, which I will not name these bloggers, but these bloggers who are anti-China exaggerate how uh, terrible China is. Overall, I'm not siding with any of these uh, anti-China or pro-China uh, bloggers and media, but I'm just staying neutral and try to stay in the middle on what side is talking about China. So overall, I think that uh, colonialism in the Opium Wars by the British also played a big role of where Hong Kong is today. And then I also think that if um, the Kuomintang Chinese won the Chinese Civil War in 1949, I think that uh, China and Hong Kong would have not been divided as today. I'm just talking about it from two sides. So my side to conclude this, I think that Hong Kong should be independent from foreign powers, whether it is uh, China or the West, particularly Britain and the U.S. I think that like uh, China, uh, no, not China, Hong Kong should be able to run its own government and have its own state, a city state like that of Singapore. I think it kind of makes sense of, uh, so there's the singer from Hong Kong named Denise Ho. In one of her speeches, she said, uh, she, she's not Chinese nor British, she's a Hong Konger, which I kind of agree with that if it's from a neutral standpoint. So keep up the good fight and keep up the good fight for freedom to the Hong Kongers out there who are not being backed by any of these countries and I salute to you all who are to all the Hong Kong protesters who are neither side with pro-western or pro-China and I salute to you all and keep up with the fight